so since I'm a since I'm a Mass Effect fan, I was told I need to uh, I need to post one of these tier lists since I since I do YouTube. So uh, I guess I'm a I guess I'm gonna do it. These are all the all the all the squad mates, like the the actual squad mates, the ones you actually you know play with on the team. There was like character tier lists, like every fucking character you meet in the game, and I was like. I would do that. That'd take fucking forever. Because some of those characters are a lot better than others. I wish I had a had a dead tier on here because Kaden would definitely be in dead tier. Never liked Kaden, bro. I don't even know why I don't like Kaden. Like talking to Kaden, he was just a he was just a he was just a bitch for no reason. Like he was always bitching. And it wasn't even like like bitching like oh man this shit bad and like it gets better no he was just bitching about nothing like yeah you like yeah you had it hard growing up an l2 that's fine they like grow the fuck up you've been an l2 how long how old was you so yeah i definitely bodied him i didn't want to deal with him no more i played through one time i played through one time complete trilogy with kaden and still didn't like him Still didn't like him at all. Not even, not e Then they made him, then they made him, like, bisexual. Oh, my goodness. Like, his character was trash. They tried to recover him. He's still trash. And, uh, just like James. If y'all seen my latest video on Mass Effect 3, I don't like James. James is a bitch. His, his, his animated movie was trash. And he, he just cries a lot. Don't know what he crying about. Like, he just be just be whining sometimes. And I'm like, bro, shut the hell up. Like, what are you crying about? I don't know. But, yeah, that, like, no. Him and Kaden, both dead. They in the dead tier. I think they're the only ones that are, like, dead to me. Those characters are trash, bro. Legit garbage. Um, I don't know. Like, James is cool sometimes. Like, after you, after you don't be his friend, I think that's what you have to do. Like, when you... When you're not James's friend, he's a better character, cause like then then he shows respect and he's he's more adult about when y'all have conversations. Cause when when you're loco to him, no, no, this nigga he's trash. He's he's a he's a weak ass character when when he's friends. Like when you're just Commander Shepard to him, he's definitely a better character. So much better character, bro. I I hated James. All the time. Like, one time, yeah, I was his friend. A couple of times, I was like, alright, just you know, friend James. But, no. You can't be friends with James. He's complete trash if you be friends with James. Ah. Uh, I don't know. This one, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to think about that. Thane? I'm gonna have to think about Thane, because, like... His character was, I don't know, it's, it's, it was always some, like, every time, like, every time I played through Mass Effect, I learned more about Thane, but I've never, like, completely, like, one time I played through the game, like, you try to talk to him, but every playthrough of Mass Effect 2 is different, things happen faster, things happen slower, so the progression of Thane is always different for me. Because he he's a, like a second half game character, like he's one of those like, uh yeah like second half game. And I never progressed his character very well, so like I know about Thane, but it was over multiple playthroughs that I learned something different, and it's it's hard to like tear him like right now. Zaid, that's a tear. Zaid. If he wouldn't, if he wasn't a DLC character, he would definitely be higher. He would probably be S tier for me. Zaid is like he's one of them niggas. that's like I'm too old for this shit, but he's still doing it. And I, I swear, like when I play, when I play the game and I be Shepard, especially when I'm Renegade Shepard, Zaid and, and Renegade Shepard are like the two greatest people besides uh, Renegade Garrus and. It works so well, because I'd be like, bro, I'm too old for this shit. And Shepard like, bro, I died and came back for this shit, bro. You don't understand. Like, both of these niggas been through so much. And it works. He's definitely a uh, Rex. 
Esther. God. God. Come on now. Or not Rex. What? <laughs> He's the GOAT. Even when I hated that he didn't get to interact with you in the second game. And I, I know that was because Mass Effect 1 was Xbox exclusive at the time. And Mass Effect 2 had to be like a clean break from Mass Effect 1. But still connecting. And that's why Erdnar Rex was like that. But at least he got the got to interact some. He was leader. Like when you make him leader of the Krogan. And he up there. And y'all were friends. I don't know. Because I've never not been friends with Rex. And he lived. Like that's the thing. Like if I killed Rex. Like if I didn't like Rex and I killed him in the first game. Then I wouldn't see Rex. Like, it'd be Reeve, and none of that would happen. But I've never been not friends with Rex, and he'd be in the game. I might have to go play through again and do that. Just to just to kind of see. Um, who's next? Tally? Come on now. A1 since day one squad. Tally is, like, one of the, one of the best characters in the game. Um, damn. Romance, like, romance and Tally is, like, one of the most conflicting things for me. Because, like, she's, like, like the like the sweetest little one. And I'm, like, no, I'm renegade chef. I can't really do that. But then sometimes I just, like, fuck it. Like, this is what she want. Let's give her what she want. And it's fine. But then I, I found I found loopholes around that. And then her, her and Gary's getting together in Mass Effect 3. I can do that. I can do that all the time. That was the best thing they could have put in the game, because one of the one of the romance Tally even though is like not is not good for her. Everybody knows it's not good for her, because y'all can't eat the same food. All this like subtle levels of even though she like loved the hell out of you. It's so many things on so many levels that like your relationship won't work long term. So when her her and Garrus got together. That was great for me. I'm like, hey, throw the assist to my nigga. That's why girls, he gotta be S tier. I I need another tier. I need a tier higher than S. Cause some of these people gotta be higher. Cause cause Rex ain't on the same level as them. I think I gotta drop Rex to A tier. They he, he not on the same level as them. Nobody's on the same level as these two characters right here. Impossible. But I kinda I kinda got to. Yeah, I kinda got to because like yeah, I I don't I don't have another tier. I need I need another tier. <laughs> I don't know how to do tier list that well, but I need another tier. I mean Ash in here. I mean hating Ash is like like such a good thing for the game, especially if you romance Ash and then y'all fall out and then like rebuilding it. Like that that made Ash way better. Like just having Ash around, I don't think that worked. She still was cool, but, like, she was always one of those, one of those people. And, like, she stood by herself. She was one of those military family people. So, role-playing Ash and, like, conflicting with Ash the whole time was so good. Romance and Ash was, was good. It's just, like, Ash was one of those, like, stubborn, strong people. Like, why do you, why do you have to build these walls? But, like, she built the walls. And you kind of can break them. But they're still, like, standing firm. Like, you, you can, like, chip at them. But, like, they, they stand real firm. And I kind of I kind of like that her character wasn't, like, that flexible. Like, yeah, she accepted some things. Like, she got over some stuff. But, like, she still, at the core, was the same character the whole time. Unshaken. And when they gave her Spectre status, Unshaken was exactly what she stood to be. I like that. I'm a, I'm a, I don't know if I put her A tier, though. She'd probably be B. Just leave her at B tier. It's fine. Miranda. I don't know. Miranda C tier. I don't know. Learning more about Miranda. Like reading like reading about Miranda. Miranda's character is like empty most of the time. Unless like you have this like the the flirting renegade dynamic. Like you push at her. And then she like she like falters finally like you like break her persona, and then you get to see like the real her like that Miranda is good but like just Miranda as as a squad mate like 
in her in combat, completely useless. Don't take her on no missions. Just you just talk to her. She's like eye candy for for the Normandy the whole second game. The third game, she's she's like she's spacing because you know like she's on the run. So I understand why you don't interact with her a lot. But then when you do get to interact with her, it's still like secretive as hell. Even though y'all kind of friends, unless you romance her, then she's like more open with you. I don't know. I don't think I could put her B. I don't want to put her C though, cause that's kind of low. I put her B. It's all right. Put her B tier. Javik, come on now. I was broke my whole childhood, so I didn't even know Javik existed except from YouTube until I finally got the uh, the DLC with the Prothean in it. Javik's cool. Like him and him and Liara's dynamic, like their dialogue when they talk and all that is cool. Learning about the Protheans from his point of view. Like, he was born in the middle of the Reaper invasion. So, like, he never lived to be, like, a, a prominent Prothean. Like, he lived to just be a soldier fighting the Reapers his whole life. And then they froze him. Then he wake up 50,000 years in the future and the Reapers are back. And he's like, bro, I'm fucking done. I enjoyed that about him. But other than that, like, his character is kind of kind of garbage. Edie. Edie's great. Edie's great. Her and Joker. The A is so good. You just have to, like, you have to play the game in sequences where, like, she's just, like, talking. Like, she's around. Like, she's not even talking to you. Like, she could be talking to other people. Like, when she's standing on the Citadel just, like, trying to figure things out. And her talking to Joker. Those are the times where Edie is just, like, top tier. I don't bring her on too many missions. Except, like, side quests. Because, you know, like... She said, like, she got to be in tight beam range of the Normandy. Or, like, her combat effectiveness goes down. So, I kind of roleplay that aspect when I use ED in the game. So, when we do, like, small missions where, like, we just go to a planet and we shuttle down. And we, we do some stuff and then we go back up. I use ED for those because, you know, roleplay value. Like, I don't just take her out everywhere. She's an alright character when, when she's battling, though. Samara. Ah, Samara got to be A tier. Samara's, uh, there's one of those characters where I'm like, let me romance her, bro. Let me romance her. Renegade ship, let me romance her. I go at Samara all the time, bro. I'm like, let me have her. You can't. <laughs> I don't know if you can. Somebody probably found out a way you can. You probably modded it in. Who knows? I try. And, like, you get, like, you can get hella close to Samara. Like, people don't know that because she pushed everybody away because, you know, just a car code. But you can legit break through all of that, bro. Like, you, you, like, I press her ass a lot. I really press on Samara. And you break through that. You can get hella close to Samara. And it's so good when you do. Because she's, like, a completely different person. Like, it's like the, like the, uh, damn <laughs> like the Miranda thing like you break through that like persona that they have and there's a whole lot under there like a lot of a lot of it most people won't see especially because when you talk to her she talks a lot about business it's all businesses as usual with her but when you get past that you start getting into like her personal stuff there's a whole lot of there she a deep ass character once you get there I think Thane's the same way but like it's like it's hella hard to get through the thing. It's way harder to get through the thing, I think. I don't know. I probably just need to try harder. Just Samara's just a better character to me. So, I'm like, alright, gotta get her. And you can't. I don't know shit about Kasumi. Because, you know, broke. I was broke. So, like, when I finally got Kasumi, like, she's cool. She talks about a lot. But, like, she's, she's legit on the side. She's on the side the whole game. Like, even when she shows up, she's invisible. And when she's invisible, she's invisible. So, like, you could talk to her, learn a lot about her, but she's set. Like, she's a set character to be, like, the stealthy ninja character girl. Like, that's it. Like, you can't romance her because she has KG, the great box, all that. Like, her story is great. When you talk to her, it's great. But other than that, like, she doesn't bring anything to the team. Or to the game. Like, she cannot be in the game and it won't change anything. Just like Javik. He cannot be in the game. It won't change anything. 
I mean, Zaid's kind of the same way, but he's more enjoyable to have in the game. Like, when he's not there, I still got, you know, A1 since day one, so I don't really worry. But Zaid's always a good character to go to in just certain situations. Because, like, he's just one of those, like, grizzled old war niggas. It's like, bro, come on now. We're going to finish this shit and go home. And I'm like, Zaid, you're definitely the one. Morden, God. I need a God tier, bro. No, I got to put him at A tier. I, S or A tier. I don't know. They have to be in the tier they own. They have to be in the tier they own because they had so much character development. They both grew so much with Commander Shepard through all three games. And they're the only two characters that got that. I mean, Liara got that as well. Kind of. Legit kind of. Like, it's not, it's not as much as they did, but she definitely got some. More than this nigga. The GOAT scientist. He been through everything. He getting old. And he still, he still gotta be the one. Only he can do these things. And he knows it. And he like, bro, let me go do this. Because I can't, I can't let nobody else do it. They'll get it wrong. And I'm like, I feel you, bro. I straight feel you. I understand. Legion. My nigga, Legion. Damn. I need another fucking tier. Because I can't, I can't have Legion that low. Like, he's not on the same level as them. But he's definitely higher than them. I mean, he can be on A tier level. I can put him on A tier level. He's not as high as they are, though. Like, he's in this bracket, maybe a little higher. Because Legion was was something nobody ever knew they needed. Because, yeah, we had Tally the whole game. The whole trilogy. We had Tally. She talked about the Geth. You kill hella Geth. But you never got to speak to a Geth. And then Legion comes along. And, yeah, you can scrape him, I think. You can just not have Legion. You can play the whole trilogy, never seeing Legion ever. But um, you talk like when you get to know Legion, you learn so much about how the Geth have grown since when the Quarians first made them and they fought and exiled the Quarians. You learn so much about the history of the Mass Effect universe through this one robot. Well, he's not one because he's like a couple thousand Geth in one unit. But he's himself like he was himself, but he was fighting against it. He was fighting his own growth throughout the, the two games, the you know, the second game and the third game. Like he was fighting his own growth and he didn't he didn't want to realize it until the end. And when he did, it was like I was like, damn folks, like you really you and now you're gone. And it's like Legion, he became Legion. It's it's kind of strange to say, you have to see it to really understand. But, like, when he talked to Edie, like, Edie talks about herself as herself because she just created, like, she became an AI from a VI program that went crazy. And then they altered her and made her into an artificial intelligence. So she she became self-aware of herself, like, out of nowhere. Something went wrong on Luna Base on the first game, and then she transformed into an artificial intelligence. So she was already a singular being. And they just gave her the process and power to be smarter, to learn more. Legion became singular, but he always kept himself with the the consensus so he can feel whole, even though he was already singular. It's crazy. Legion Legion's character is so complex in so many different ways. And you learn, you learn a whole lot about the whole world from Legion's point of view. And then there's the body thing. Because, like, all the Geth that you kill, you don't kill Geth, essentially. And Legion tell you that. Like, oh, they, they're software. Like, they just download into more hardware, and they back on the field. And that's what made the Geth so strong. But Legion was killable. Well, was damageable, at least. Because, like, Legion kept his original body from original creation in Legion. And when he got injured, he tried to fix himself with old Commander Shepard parts. And you ask him about it, like, bro, why you why you weld my armor pieces to your body? And he like, I don't like he don't know because he was himself, but in the consensus he's he's Geth. 
And yeah, he fixed himself because he didn't want to lose himself, even though he's Geth. It's crazy. Like, I could talk about Legion for for hellas. Jacob, Jacob's all right. Like, I, I wouldn't put him at the bottom with these two. Jacob was just like, I don't know. He was just a, just a, just a casual soldier nigga. Like, legit, just a casual soldier nigga. Like, he was just there. And I'm like, damn, they should have, like, should they should have made him more. Everybody hated how he just, <laughs> how he just duck you on the romance. Like, he just dropped your ass. I'm like, damn, that's the main character thing to do. I think, I think him in the third game was a result of people forgetting that he was romanceable in the second game. And he was, he was, he was a, he was a kind of an empty character in the second game. So people probably just overlooked his romance anyway. I didn't even know it was a thing for a long time. But when it was, then they just ruined it in the third game. Like, oh yeah, he just moved on. You was in jail for like six months. He didn't want to lay it on you. And it's like, damn, they made Kirk, they made Jacob look crazy, bro. Like, you a, you a bastard, nigga. You a straight bastard. Jack, Subject Zero, just saved your ass with the kids. Gotta be, I don't know if you beat her. I mean, being, yeah, put her beat her. Gotta put her beat her, because... Jack is one of those characters that like you can you can you can help her at least find closure for her past and then like she grows and then like romancing her is better. Like if you don't romance her and y'all just friends, like her character development is good, but she she develops a lot more when you romance her only because like she opens up to you more. She she's like it's a it's a personal deep thing with Jack and when you don't have that connection you don't get all of her and I understand it like that's good writing even though a lot of people would see that as like a weaker character I like, know it's just better writing that way because like she's closed off to the world like even when you get slightly closer to her as being friends with her and like you get at least some connection with her like that's a whole lot more than everybody in the universe is getting. And yeah, when you romance her, it, it opens up all the doors. You get to talk to her, see her in so many different ways. Y'all have fun at the shootout in Citadel DLC. The party, giving you the tattoo. Like, all of that stuff is like, like, this deep in the character development that everybody can see. And it's good that everybody won't be able to see that unless you invest in that. Which is great. Liara, goddamn Liara, you gotta be like, up here. Because these three, I mean, Liara is a little bit under them, though. Because A1 says day one team is, like, unmatched. Then there's Liara. Liara can be above them sometimes. It depends. Because, like, when you romance Liara, no matter what shepherd you are romancing Liara, it's, it's definitely worth it. And I think it's the only it's the only romance that I, that I go to, like, just on a normal playthrough. Only because it works so well. I don't even know why it works so well. I think it's just written to just work that damn good. And you find out so much about her, her whole family history, her world, her her character growth between the three games is drastic. I'm talking about you go from little uh archaeologist, legit <laughs> stuck in a in a in a dying fucking planet, saving her with a mining laser. To legit shadow broker. And if, when I was broke. And I didn't understand. How she grew. And I was like. What the fuck went on? Like she just went. She just went savage. Out of nowhere. She went fucking savage. You wake up in the third game. And now she just bad bitch savage. And you're like. What the fuck happened to you? But I like it. But then like. You know. I got older. I got to be able to buy the. The, uh, the shadow broker DLC. And then you watch her grow into the savage that she became like you talked to her a little bit in the mass effect too just to like see like hey like she's definitely not the same little girl from two years ago that you was saving off that planet like no like she's grown and then shadow broker just showed all the growth that she had how everybody else seen her you finally got to see her like that and then you see her back in the third game complete savage straight bad bitch to her a1 
She's always at the top. Grunt. My nigga Grunt. Oh, that's my son right there. Emiliar and Grunt every time. You got to go to H tier though. Because, yeah, Grunt is like, yeah, just my son. Just my son Grunt. He's just a kid, even though he's a grown-ass man kid. But, yeah, he's like you birth him and you teach him to be savage. Even though it's in his genetics, it's in his bones, it's in his DNA, in his core, he's savage. But you teach him the way of savage. And it was great. Like, parenting Grunt was one of the best experiences in Mass Effect. Everybody does it a different way. But I make sure Grunt come out of Savage. Then the third game come, and you see him all grown up. And you like, my boy Grunt, he leading the squad to kill the rack now. That's all you ever wanted. That's all you ever want from your kids, to succeed. That's all you ever want. Grunt gave me parenting without me having to be a parent. And I like that. Thane. Oh, my gosh. I just got to this, nigga. Thane, bro. I don't know where to put this, nigga. Because I, I, I don't think I made a playthrough where Thane is romance. I've seen it. I've seen it done, though. Like, I've watched it. I know... People that did. But, um, yeah, I don't know where the fuck to put Thane. I think I gotta put him in B tier. Cause, like, yeah, it's one of those characters you gotta, like, crack them. But I didn't like Thane. The first time I played through, I ignored Thane as. Cause when, when he did the first flashback thing where he was talking about, like, I think it was a flashback to, like, his first kill or something like that. And I was like, bro, what the fuck was that? Like, I'm not talking to you no more. You're being weird. But every every playthrough after that, I played through Mass Effect, the trilogy, so many times. That, like, I've, I've tried every dynamic with every character, I think, except Javik. And I only tried once with Kaden. Kaden, no. Never again. Kaden is fucking trash. But, uh, Garrus Vicarian, the GOAT. These three characters, the, the S tier needs to be higher. I need to make a tier just, like, the best. And then S tier. I can move, like, Rex up and Morden and Legion. But these three are just untouchable, bro. Like, some of the best characters in game history. Every game. You can... You can go to any game you want. Your favorite game of all time. These three characters are written and and scaled better than every one of those. Every one of them. There's not one character in game in. I would put on a tier list higher than these three. And I played a lot of fucking games. I'm talking about main characters for games. I wouldn't even put Shepard on the highest tier than these three. <laughs> I wouldn't put Shepard on the highest tier than these three. Because I mean, girls. Shepard and Vicarian taking on the universe and they take on heaven. That shit hit at the end of the game. That shit hit. Seeing Liara again in that in that trailer, Mass Effect Returns. That shit hit. I'm mean, just talking to Tally about anything. You can talk to her about freaking freaking nerve stimulation. You can talk to her about <laughs> Legion or the Geth. Her dad, the the Admiralty board. You know how many times I asked her about the Conclave in the first game? Leave it down below. But yeah, that's my tier list. I could just throw Caden away. Caden, you don't even make the tier list. I can't take you off. Caden don't even make the tier list, bro. He wasn't even a character to me. Like, if he wasn't a character in the game... Like, the only reason I let him live the first time is because Ash was... It was like somebody that you saved. Like you saved her. Gonna retrieve, you know, Ashley Williams. And Kaden was there first. And I'm like, alright. Like, if I gotta choose. Like, I gotta keep the A1s. But then Kaden became trash. Like, he became complete garbage after that. So I'm like, why the fuck do I keep Kaden? I went back. I went back. I'm taking Ash. And yeah, she was always grateful for you saving her. But, like, she, like, motive. Her motives and your motives were always clashing. In the romance with them. In the motives clashing, so good, so good. Two strong personalities clashing like that, it made for good. It made for good uh, entertainment. 
Caden was just a bitch, bro. Him and James were just, bro. These niggas are soft, nigga. I hated them. James was low key trying to get on uh, what the fucking shuttle pilot name? I forgot. Damn, I forgot that nigga name. James was trash though. Legit garbage. But yeah, that's my tier list. Real Mass Effect fans had to make a tier list. That's what they told me. So I'm like, all right. That's my tier list. It's probably the greatest tier list out there. But let me know. Hey, yeah, I dropped some tier lists. And uh let me see what y'all see what y'all think about this. But for me, that's it. The A1 since day ones, they gotta be the top. More than the top. They should be off the fucking chart. Garris, Liara, Tally, top tier. And then there's everybody else. <laughs> then there's everybody else. It's them three, then it's everybody else. But yeah, that's my tier list. I don't even know if I would change nobody. I wouldn't. I don't think I would. Yeah, I don't think I would. I mean, putting Jacob lower. <laughs> but, like, Jacob was cool. Like, you talked to him. And, like, how the how the Alliance did him is one of the reasons why he turned evil. Well, turned Cerberus, anyway. Cerberus wasn't evil. They were just, like, terrorist organization to the government. Because they like, bro, you did us wrong. Everybody in Cerberus got done wrong by the Alliance, and they turned Cerberus. Even Commander Shepard. So it makes sense. I understand. But yeah. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. And uh, I'll see y'all in the next video.